Hello, welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you very much for joining us. And by us, I mean uh, we have with us Ellen Schleicher, who is the Sheboygan County Register of Deeds. And that is a very important job. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's also work. It's, yes, it I've is. been in that office. There's just books and stuff that goes back into the mid-1800s that every record in there is your responsibility. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think some of the people watching probably should uh, maybe understand that uh, you're an elected position. That's the way their uh, forefathers wanted to do it um, because that's a good check and balance because when a treasurer or a, a sheriff or a register of deeds is elected, uh, they are really um, obligated only to the people that elected them. And while they have to be respectful of the county that uh, houses them, but uh, um, you are really uh, a servant to the people. That's correct. I am. <laughs> <laughs> they are my bosses. <laughs> and every time they come in, I think you're rushing around to take care of them. Uh, before we get into uh, discussing the importance of uh, some of the duties of the uh, Register of Deeds, you have another life. You have husbands and a farm, and why don't you give the viewers a little background? You've done things before you became a Register of Deeds person. Right. Um, well, my husband and I will be married 38 years on uh, November 24th, so a week and a half away. Um, we have four children and two grandchildren. Wow. So um, and you, you busy. Live, you live on, on a little farm, and your, your husband works with your son on a... a hog operation. Hog operation. Mm -hmm. Is that a big one or a little one? Or? It's, it's not huge, but um, actually they uh, breed for show hogs, okay. and we also sell market okay. for, to, to folks who want to have um, homegrown oh. raised pigs. Yeah, like a pork chop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we all have, have secondary lives and, and husbands and wives and, and uh, besides the job. Um, that's an important job, uh, dealing with the uh, um, Register of Deeds. But you do more than Register of Deeds, but we'd like to get into You have a, a property fraud alert. That's a new responsibility that's put on the Register of Deeds office? It's not really a, a new responsibility. We offered that uh, many years ago, and at that time, or at a couple of years ago, though, uh, because of budget constraints, mm -hmm. uh, we had to we had to discontinue that. But our software company now is is allowing us to get back into that program um, for at no cost. So. Pretty much what it is, is uh, if someone is trying to do something fraudulent with your property, um, in many larger cities, they're having issues where people are recording deeds. In Milwaukee, it's a good example Milwaukee, of that. Milwaukee, yeah. right. Um, and th what this property fraud alert does is if anything is done with your property, with your, you know, then you are notified and it actually is uh, it's run through our office, but our software company is who, is who deals with it. So you, you sign up with them at uh, www.fiddler.com and look for the property alert. You can just pick your county, mm -hmm. put your name and information in. You can get either notified email or phone call. And um, if anything is done, and that means even if it's legitimate, like if you pay off your mortgage mm -hmm. or you take out a loan, anything that is tied to that property, you will get an, uh, an alert on. And which, that's just, Which is wonderful. You know what's going on and, and you can react to uh, anything that's unusual and to make any corrections that need to be, especially if you're going to sell the property and you haven't looked at that uh, information for a while, that might be helpful. Right. I mean, and it... It is, a, it is a good, I'm glad we can bring it back to the yeah. people. And it's at no cost to, to us well, we or like, the, we or like the no property owner. We like no cost. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you don't get very much free no, anymore. No, and, and you know, anytime you're talking about raising, uh, you know, the, the taxes and, and prices of cars and other things go up, but it's, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to do. And even when you, the car prices go up a thousand, nobody wants to buy a car sometimes. Correct. Birth certificates, you take care of that. 
birth certificates, marriage, marriage, cer certificate. marriage certificates, death certificates, and as of That's sort of a final thing, though, isn't it? It is kind of. <laughs> well, it's a circle of life, I yeah, guess. Um, sure. And as of uh, January 2017, we also now can issue divorce certificates. Um, I mean, which, if somebody's going to get divorced, they can come and get one? If or? they are divorced. Oh, I see. No, right. I knew with the answer right. already. Yeah. <laughs> they can. So uh, I suppose you have to sometimes prove that uh, you, if you were married at one time and now divorced, that if you're going to buy a house or a car or something, sometimes you have to prove that you are independent, I suppose. It is, I, I think, more for when they want to get remarried. Oh, I see. Um, then they have to show that they are divorced. Okay. They have to show that that if that paperwork. Bigamy is not allowed in Wisconsin, right. apparently. Yeah. Well, I think federal. federal yeah, that's, no, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's good for somebody to know. Um, the uh, um, uh, One of the things that uh, you, you deal with is also veterans that uh, are uh, leave service, uh, they can record their veteran uh, DD-4? 214s. 214? Mm -hmm. Their discharge papers are filed in our office. Um, and I, I had talked, we worked together with the veteran services as far as um, folks getting their, getting their information when they need it. Um, I have been told by the veteran service that Wisconsin is the only state, one of the only states that the DD-214s are confidential. Ah. So they're not open to the public. Um, and so they're protected because they have a lot of information on them, you know, personal information. So that is a good thing that they're sure. confidential. And we also issue a free, a free birth certificate or for the veteran for when they retire for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Um, that is st by state statutes. We, we are allowed to do that. So if somebody comes in and, and uh, they're a veteran and they're about to retire, they can get a free one? Yes. So we usually tell them to go through uh, veteran services, and then veteran services will request it. Um, and part of that is because there's a lot of programs that they may be eligible for. Uh -huh. um, so like I said, we work with veteran services office um, in, in the county, and um, that's the best way to go. Well, every county has to have a... Uh, Veteran service officer, uh, either a full time or part time. Some counties are very um, small population wise, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they have half time uh, people. But uh, they do have in Wisconsin, which is one of the great things about the state, they make sure that uh, every county has a person uh, that, if there are service men and women that are having problems, they can get that information from uh, from them. And of course, the different uh, County offices like yours work in tandem with, with everybody. Correct. Yeah. Now the uh, um, types of other things that you do uh, is what at the uh, you have a staff of how many? Uh, six. All right. And uh, as I recall, um, from about 1848 until 2007 eight, um, the records weren't. Um, it's solid because back in the early days, uh, people would live on a farm and somebody would pass away or a child uh, would die and um, uh, during birth they would just uh, go back in the, uh, in their, by their house mm -hmm. and have their own little cemetery. So there were some gaps in the information, but now uh, it's pretty much required that they, uh, that all of this is reported. How does that work? That you get all of these records. Some of those are old, right? Um, and it's actually 1848 to 1907 okay. um, is where they're sporadic yeah. because because um, uh, they're still there. It was 1907 when it was re when there were state statutes that said, okay. you know, they had to they had to record births, deaths, and marriages in a county office or a city at that time because city of Sheboygan you know, did the city of Sheboygan just mm -hmm. like city of Milwaukee does. But when they got rid of their health department, all those records came to our office. So now they're all just located in our office. Um, You're doing some updating though, aren't you? We are. Uh, we have 
Um, Those are old books. I've seen they are they're old huge. books, and we have old, old records that we uh, were so brittle, um, marriage, birth, and death records, yeah. that we did scan them, get them scanned in and digitized. And we're working on, uh, they're all in the computer. So, you know, we can access those records without having to damage so you, know, you don't the have paper. to go in and, and turn pages anymore because you're right. Some of that uh, paper they used was you know, probably good paper, but uh, not uh, paper that was intended to last 200 or 300 years. Correct, correct. Of course, I'm not sure if digitals are made to last that long. Well, we hope, yeah. you know, and that's part of my uh, responsibility is to ensure that if there, what records we do now have uh, scanned in and in, in the computer, that when programs change as technology advances, we have to ensure that we move that into the new new technology. Because we did run into some glitches with that, um, but you know we were able to make sure that we had our records, and and they'll always be in paper form. But the damage is now with people paging through the books. Yeah. You know, well, genealogy and other things, right? Yes, yes. Well, one of the things uh, that um, uh, some people look at and say, well, we've got registered deeds, we've got sheriffs, why don't we appoint those people? Well, our forefathers, wisely, I think, realized that if all of these offices, which you really are, are, are directed by the state, um, fall under the county, uh, then the Register of Deeds and the clerk and all of those are beholden to the power of only the county. The elected person, like you are, you're obligated to be responsible to the county and the, the committee that uh, over, oversee you, but you're also independent uh, by the elected person. You don't have to uh, jump to a tune necessarily if somebody is going to try to do something that maybe looks wrong. Right. And that um, happens. It does happen. And um, it, I'm happy that I can look out for my constituents, mm -hmm. um, for the voters, that they, they really are my concern. Um, my loyalty is to them and to, and to try and do the best for their interests, not just one person. Right. Um, it's... Uh, I have no problem working with my peers, um, helping them out, but I don't have to, if I don't feel that what they want to do is right for my purposes or my office, I have the right to say no. Well, and that's the way it should be because if we don't have checks and balances, then people uh, that are voters need to understand that just because you can do, put everybody in one pot doesn't make necessarily the pot better. Um, right. And uh, so we have to protect our democracy by having checks and balances and having independent sheriffs and, and treasurers and registered deeds and others uh, is a blessing rather than a curse. And chances are you're doing things that are economically very good for the county anyway. Right. Um, but we do have to close down, and I have to sort of end it. I want to thank uh, um, Ellen Schleicher, Register of Deeds, for coming in and talking about uh, the complex things that takes place in our office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day.